Good morning, church. How's everyone doing this morning? Will you stand to your feet as we begin in worship? Let's clap our hands. Hey. Lift it up. We can't hold back our grateful soul. Forever changed, forever changed by what you've done. King and creator, king and creator. Wonderful Savior. How awesome is the Lord. here. We're so glad you're with us this morning. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there or soon to be dads. Andrew's going to be a dad here pretty soon. That's awesome. It's so exciting for him. Got somebody to play video games with. That's what us dads all long for, somebody to play video games with us. So we're so grateful you're here today. And uh, we are real people with real issues finding real hope. And that's really our heart, who we are. And so you get to know us more, you'll know, hey, that guy got, has a lot of issues. Uh, and, but we have real hope, and it's in Christ this morning. So thanks for being here with us. If you're a guest or a regular, we want you to pay attention to this video here real quick. And I'll be right back in a moment. Welcome to One Church. Our church is all about people becoming disciples of Jesus. What does that look like? We connect, we grow, and we make a difference. A special welcome to all guests, whether this is your first time, second time, or maybe you haven't been here in a while. We're so glad you're here. 
In the seat back pocket in front of you, you'll find a card labeled, So You're New Here. This will provide a few details to make your visit the best it can be. Also in the seat back pocket, you'll find the Connect card. If you're here for the first time, fill that out and let us know you're here. Bring it to the hub in the back. We've got some info and a gift for you there. If you're here for the second time, we want to know you're back. Fill out your Connect card, bring it to the hub. We've got a special gift for you as well, a $10 gift card of your choice. Whether you're a guest or a regular, the Connect card is the way for you to sign up for things, information about the church, ministry or events, as well as opportunities to volunteer and serve. You can also request prayer or let us know of a decision you're making today to follow Jesus. After filling out the Connect card, you can place it in the offering or drop it off by the hub on your way out. We're so glad you're here. Once again, we want to welcome you. You can introduce yourself because you are not my wife and I'm not introduced. Well, no, I am not your wife. But my name is James and I'm part of the staff here at One Church. And if you're a first or you're a second time visitor here, we would love for you to fill out that Connect card that's in the back of the chair, like they said in the video, and either drop it off at the hub or put it in the offering baskets that's going to take place here in a few minutes. If you're a first time visitor, we have this handy dandy One Church mug that we'd love to give you. Uh, it's, it's awesome. I actually I actually bought one, and it actually keeps it nice and hot for me throughout the morning. Remember, there's two places that you can find out about what's going on in the events at One Church. What if you're a second-time guest? What do you get? Well, if you're a second-time guest, you get a gift card. How and much is that gift card? Well, you told me it was like 300 No, I'm just kidding. $10. $10. <laughs> you get a $10 gift card. and uh, From James. It's called his debit yes, card. Yes, yes. It's his debit, debit card, and card. I got the number for you. We're good to go. Um, I messed you up, huh? You totally messed me up. I just had to make sure we covered bases. So we're now, we we got the guests taken care of. If you're a regular, fill out a card if you got any questions. And then we have some two places that you can find out the information. One is in the planner that you should have got, in the planner that you should have got when you came in. And the other one is our Facebook page. So if you haven't gone on, like our Facebook page, and that will keep you up to date on all the events that are going on here at One Church. All right, so in your bulletin, you should see there's Women's Worship Night coming up, and uh, I believe that's next Saturday, this com- this or this coming Saturday. And so we want to invite all the ladies out for our worship night on the 25th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Just going to be a great time of seeking the Lord and in worship and the Word and the truth of God's Word. So we're so excited about that. And we just want to make sure all the ladies know also to bring some canned foods or dry foods. Bring something because we're, we're trying to bring in some food to give to our food pantry, which is through Interfaith Ministries. So please uh, bring something and be a part of that night on the 25th. That's going to be a great time. Also, 4th of July. How many people like the 4th of July? Woo! I love the 4th of July because you get to eat. Well, one church is going to put on a, a barbecue at Silva Park. It's at 5800 Antique Roseway here in, here in Riverbank. All we're asking you to bring is bring a salad, bring a side, basically. We'll provide the meat, the hot dogs and hamburgers. You get to cook it, but we'll provide it. And we would love to have you out there. It's going to be a great time, lots of fun, lots of games. It's just a great way for our community to see that the body of Christ likes to have fun too. And maybe they see us and they want to become a part of us. Yeah, and our own Dave Jones has built a big barbecue for us. So you don't got to bring your own barbecue. We got the barbecue there for you. Uh, but you do got to cook your own stuff. So uh, that way we can have all the men, all the men hang around the barbecue pit and wait for the ladies to flip everything and make sure it doesn't burn. All right. Um, well, also uh, in your planner, you can see there we have a. Uh, our network is doing a lot for young adults. So if you're a young adult, you're in that uh, 18 to, to 28 range, and uh, you want to go hang out with some of the young adults, we want to encourage you that this Thursday at 6 p.m. you can get more information on the website and on our page. So uh, we want to encourage that. I'm going to ask that the ushers would come at this time and begin to make their way up here. What a beautiful day out there. Everybody brought your sunglasses so when you walk out, the concrete is not too bright. Uh, We're working on that. We got some plans for that in the future. But uh, I just wanna say once again how grateful I am for this church family. Uh, Shared last week how last month was just an incredible month of blessing and giving 
Um, and this month has started out as well. And just seeing God do some great things um, and we're able to do some ministry and, and touch lives and see lives change. So we say this around here, you don't give to one church, you give through one church. And what you do, and when we do that, we're giving into ministry, we're seeding into life. So thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, thank you today for you are a good God. You are a faithful God. You are a God who provides for us, Lord, as we follow you. Lord, and as we are obedient to your word and your, your way of doing finances, we don't got to worry about the world's economics because we live in yours. And Lord, you bless those who follow you and are obedient to you. So Lord, I pray for those who are following in you, that you'd bless them this morning, Lord, and as we give to you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. As the ushers are doing that, I'm going to invite Shelly to come join me, and we're going to have our kids. We got kids heading off to camp tomorrow. Right. So should, oh, there they are. They're our kids here. Heading they're off in the to back. Camp. Come on up. This is just a representation of our kids who are getting ready to to go to camp. You guys can come. Just why don't you just come right come, come right in the front, right across here, down front. Line on up all the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here. Right here. Right Bethany, here. right here. These are. These are six out of 14 campers that we have that we're sending up to camp. That's a big deal. We're a little church. We're a little church. So, so how many of you are going to camp for the second time? This is your second experience, right? I think we have one third time camper. Do we have a third time camper? Right there, third time camper, Lexi. So this is a big deal. This rep we have 14 kids. These are primarily almost all of our core kids that come to church here and call Crossroads Campus their home. And we just want to pray for them. Uh, Miss Danielle is one of the counselors. Adam and Bodhi Pulley are also going up as counselors. And it's, I'm just believing that God is going to do an amazing work. And that they are going to have so much fun and come home with no broken bones, no bee stings. Right, guys? Okay? All right, make sure you count each other's head, use the buddy system. So if we'll just stretch our hands out yeah. and pray for them as they get ready to go, it's going to be a great week ahead of them. And you guys be praying and anticipating to, to meet the Lord. Father, I just thank you so much for our kids, God. I thank you, Lord, for these 14 that are you've called to go to camp and you've made a way for them, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the counselors, Lord, that always step up, Lord, to be leaders and, and watch over and be a blessing upon our kids and our families, Father. Father, I pray for all 14 of them. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would meet them there. I know you are already waiting there for them, for their arrival, Lord. And I pray, Lord, this weekend that you would begin to just raise up in an excitement in them, Lord, that they would go expecting to have a have a wonderful time and to meet with you, Lord God. And I just, I just ask, Lord, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, and let them just come home loving you and on fire for you. And we will give you all the praise. You are a good, good God. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, yay. Amen. Give it up for our campers. Be here at 1 o'clock. All right, guys. See you guys tomorrow at 1 o'clock. You can go. There they go. Look at how obedient they are. We got well-trained young people. All right. Well, we are so excited. Today's going to be a great day. In a little bit, we get to dedicate children. Um, that is one of the great things you get to do as a pastor. Baptisms that dedicate children um, is it, just one of those amazing things. So we're going to have that here in a little bit. But right now, we want you to join with us. Would you stand? And we're going to go into a time of worship. Now, if you're a guest and you're new and you're new to this environment, you're new to seeing this, here's how I explain it best. Is knowing what Jesus did for me there's nothing that can hold me back from worshiping him and giving him the glory and giving him the honor. You know, when somebody does something amazing for you, if somebody saved your life, like Shane saved Zaylee's life yesterday from the pool, sacrificed his phone as she backed her tricycle into the pool and he grabbed her. And it, if somebody does that, you, I don't know about you, but you have a feeling of indebtedness to them. You, you want to, you, you just can't talk, stop talking about them and thanking them. And that's what worship is. It's talking about God. It's proclaiming who he is and saying, thank you, Jesus. So would you join us? Lord, we worship you.
We worship you in Jesus' name.
saves you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will bring you quietness with his love. He will delight in you and with shouts of joy. I just want to bring our focus in this morning on this verse, and I feel the Lord's saying this over us, is that I will, I'll say this, I will, God will rejoice over you with gladness. Maybe you're here and, you know, you've just had a rough week. Can I just tell you that God is singing over you with gladness. Maybe your, your marriage is just kind of in the ropes. God is singing over you this morning. He will bring, God will bring you quietness with his love. Anybody love their quiet time? Whether it's just by yourself, all the noise and things like that can distract us, but God is saying, I'm singing over you with love this morning. With every hand lifted high, God, our focus today is that you would sing over us. Will you rejoice over us with singing? Will you just tell the Lord that, say, God, sing over me.
this room. Can we just sing that part here in your presence? Lord, I surrender. That be your prayer this morning. Come on, let's sing it out here in your presence. And here in your presence, Lord. this over here and surrender it all. Because when we surrender it all, then His Holy Spirit can come in and consume us for His glory. See, I see so many Christians that are miserable. They're miserable they're a, a poor witness for God because they won't surrender everything. They only want to surrender this much. If God, if you really want to live the life that you're called to live, that you were created to live, then you have to surrender all. Lord, today we just give you the glory, God. Because Lord, we, we, we surrender everything. We lay it down before you. Lord, for those that are here and they're struggling with that, and there's this back and forth. Lord, I want it my way. No, Lord, I need it your way. But God, I want this. But Lord, I know you want this. Lord, help us to surrender it all. So Lord, that we can live the life you called us to live. We can see your Holy Spirit working. Lord, we can see you moving in our lives and those around us. Father, we're hearing of miracles happening, healings that are taking place in our church, in our families. Lord, and I just pray that we would just release you and release the Holy Spirit to consume us like a fire. Lord, that you would receive all glory and you would receive all honor to your wonderful and glorious name. Amen. Amen, amen. What an incredible morning of worship. You can have a seat this morning. I'm so glad that uh, you're here with us. And uh, we get to do something now that, like I said, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do as a pastor. And I get to dedicate children. Um, and so, so many times we get caught up in all the ministry and all the things that are happening and uh, we, we forget what's going on over there in our children's building. We forget the ministry that's happening to our littles. Um, I love it because my, my teenage daughters are over there and they're helping out and they're ministering and they're, they're, they're learning and getting to pour into our, our children. And so we value children. We believe in children and believe that uh, they are a key part of who we are. They are not our tomorrow. They are our today. They're not our future. They're our now. And so we invest in them and we believe in them. I'm going to invite Shelly to join me at this time. And we have two families that are going to be dedicating children this morning. And so I want to invite the Lapices and the Wands to bring their children and come join us. Uh, Lapices, if you'll go to my left and the Wands come here to my right. Um, we are so excited. They got the family here. Are we missing a Lapisi? We are missing a Lapisi. Are, are we in, in the vicinity? Hey, she's got three kids to get ready. She's got three kids to get ready. I, I understand that. Um, so here's what we're going to do is... Uh, <laughs> don't know what I'm going to do. That's okay. We can, just, we can come back to we'll the Lapices. Yeah, we'll come back to the Lapices. It's island time, you know, it, right? right? We'll, we'll come back. Time. Yeah, we'll hit you here island sooner. Island time. We'll, it's island time. Yeah. 
Yes. All right. Well, what we do here at one church, um, there's there's different denominations, different beliefs that they baptize children. We don't believe that. We believe baptism is a statement of them declaring their faith, being made new, as you've seen some of our shirts. And so what we do believe is that the example that we're given by uh, Joseph and Mary is that in Luke chapter 2, uh, they took Jesus to the temple to be prayed over and, and, and to be committed to. And so uh, we believe that it is our duty to commit our children to the Lord and, and to stand beside our, our families and our parents as we do that. And it is it's just such a powerful thing because as parents, we have a huge responsibility. We have a huge responsibility. And today, it's really cool because a lot of times you see child dedications on Mother's Day, right? Right? Moms get all the glory. It's like they did some special work or something. So, like, you know, dads, uh, we, you know, we're just fathers, you know. I'm Lunch just kidding. Just I'm changed. just kidding. I've been there for seven births. I understand it's nothing I ever want to experience. Uh, Hats off to the moms. You are incredible. But I think it's really cool that today we get to dedicate babies on Father's Day. So this is our first one child that we get to dedicate here at the Crossroads campus. And that's just exciting. It's so exciting. So can we bring them up? And yep. the Lapisis will be here. So yep. let's come right up on and, here and in the middle of us. And we have family here. If you guys want to come down and take pictures, it's totally fine. So this is Joshua Joseph Juan, and he brought with him his family today, his mom, Roxanne, and his dad, Matthew, and his little brother, Christopher, right? Christian, Christian, and his very big sister, Bethany. And so we're so happy to have the Juan family with us today. We got grandparents and other family in the room today. It's just so exciting. So I'm turning it over to you, right. Pastor Tracy. So as we talk about our, our children and our dedication, this morning I want to challenge and give a charge to you as parents. Um, Matthew, the, the Bible is very clear. As the father and the husband, we are the head of the house, the spiritual head of the house, just as Christ is the head of the body. And we have a responsibility as fathers to be that model to exemplify Christ in our actions, in our attitudes. And that little guy will follow your actions more than he will follow your words. I have lots of kids. I know this from experience. I have seven and three bonus kids. But I know that my kids see what I do more than they hear what I say. And so I challenge you as a father, get into God's word, know God's word, because the answers as a, for a father are right there. And it will give you the strength, it will give you the guidance to lead them and to set that example. Roxanne is a mom. As a mom, the challenge for you is to show them the unconditional, amazing love of Christ. Yeah, you have to be sometimes the disciplinarian, right? But in that, you have to show them the love of Christ. And when you show them that unconditional love, there will come a day and a point in their life when they feel like their world's crumbling or there's something going wrong, that they can stand on the love that you showed them because they know that the love of Christ was exemplified through their mom. So if you guys accept that challenge today, I want you to say, I do. All right. Grandparents, you don't get out of this. All right? You are to set the example also by your actions and your deeds. May they glorify the Father. 
May your grandchildren one day, as my grandchildren, or my children say about my parents, they led us in the ways of the Lord. They showed us who Christ was in all that they did and all that they said. So grandparents, I challenge you today, will you be the model of Christ for your grandson? If so, say I do. All right, church, you're not out of this. This says, you've heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a church, a body of Christ to raise children in the ways of the Lord. And so I challenge you, as you come and you're a part of this family, that you would exemplify Christ in all that you say and do. That these children wouldn't walk around and say, oh, that's a church that gossips. That's a church that there's no unity. That's a church that talks about other people. But you, we would be a church that models and sets the tone. For our children if that's if you would agree with that say i do i do all right let's pray lord we thank you today lord we thank you for joshua this morning we thank you for his life lord and all the life that's in him lord we thank you that you created him unique and special and you have a call and a purpose for his life that maybe we don't even we can't even comprehend or understand today but lord we pray a blessing over him we pray an anointing upon him. We pray protection around his life, all the days of his life. Lord, and as for Matt and Roxanne, as they lead him, Lord, I pray you would give Matt wisdom through your word. Lord, that he could be the father that he's to be called by you as the head of the house to lead his children in the ways of the Lord. And Lord, for Roxanne, I pray that you would Give her that heart of, of, of Christ, that heart of grace, that heart of mercy, that heart of unconditional love. Lord, that her children would look at her and call her wonderful. Lord, I thank you for their commitment to you today, and I pray over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today we want to give you this little vial of anointing oil. There's gonna come times when Joshua is sick or when you just want him to go to sleep <laughs> and you wanna pray over him really hard. This is for that and for all your kids. He's like, I don't wanna to go to sleep. What are you talking about, dude? But uh, we want you to take this and use this anytime and know that we as the body of Christ will stand behind you. Thank you guys. Can you give it up for the wands this morning? You guys can go. I'll get it out of the way. We're going to have the Lapices come. This is exciting. Come on up. All right. Did we lose Zoe? Where's Zoe? Zoe, you want to come up? Come up with Pastor. Oh, hi, sweetie. She is. This is a great family. Um, you know, we are we are blessed to uh, have the Lapices as part of us and part of our family. And um, we, we've really gotten to know them, and they're, like, really, like, family to us. And so I love it. Uh, I mean, to the, to the point that Zoe and I have had some pretty in-depth conversations about my jiggly chins. Huh. She's awesome. I love Zoe. Um, but we are so grateful that you're here with us and a part of our family. And not only a part of us, you're leading with us. And a lot of times you guys, we hear Shane, he's up here leading. But uh, Vanessa is a strong leader and a, a woman of God. And those of you that were here several months ago when she preached, you know that there's an anointing and a call on her life. Right now, that call is dealing with three littles. And uh, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of, a lot of pressure. So we're so glad you're here. Um, and I'm going to have you introduce everybody. So let's see. We're dedicating two Lapisi children today. The first one is Zaley. 
and her name is Azalea. Do you want to say her middle name? Go for it. Aule. I can't even get our own grandkids' middle <laughs> names right. That's why I'm here is to say her, her Samoan name. Azalea Aulele Lapisi. We love you. And the newest Lapisi, the little Bubba. Oh, he's <laughs> Bubblicious right here. This is Zephaniah, Penny, Amina, Lapisi. And how many, how many months is he now? Three months, three months. Why are you Checking looking for the, the wife? Shit. I should have just on. gone straight to <laughs> Vanessa. Yes. Well, we're so excited. And um, as I charge Matthew, I charge you, Shane. You are the head of this house. You are the spiritual covering. And you have a responsibility to cover your wife and your children for the sake of their lives and their freedom. And so today I encourage you, always, always seek God's word. Always stand on his truths. They will never fail you. They will never let you down. So when we think we know it and we understand it, but we've got it figured out that we're in trouble. So always go to the Lord as you lead your family and as you lead your children and your son and your daughters will watch not only your words, but your actions. And they will follow them in greater ways. So I challenge you to do that today. If you accept that challenge, say I do. And Vanessa, I love you. And you are the heart of the family. He may be the head, but you're the heart of the family. And the love of Christ that flows through you to your children is a powerful thing. I know in my own life, when I struggled with God and who God was, I can remember the love of my mother and her love for Christ, her, not her passion for Christ. And so I challenge you today to be so passionate about Christ and who he is in your life that it will overflow out of abundance of your heart to your children because that will draw them more than anything else to the heart of God. And you will set that example. If you accept that challenge, say, I do. Coming out to the grandparents. Grandparents. It's a blessing to be a grandparent. But it's also a responsibility. Yes, we get to spoil them and send them home. Thank you, Jesus, for that privilege. But we also need to model and teach them the things of Christ and love them in the ways that they need to go. And if you accept that challenge, say, I do. Church, once again, the challenge is to us. Are you going to model Christ? Are you going to be the example that these children need? I love when they come up and Zoe calls me, Pastor, Pastor. Your hair looks funny today, Pastor when I don't do my hair. I love it. I love it because it gives me an opportunity to love her and show her who Christ is. So church, if you will accept the challenge, say I do. I do. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, I thank you for Shane and Vanessa. I thank you for Zaley and Zephaniah. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, as they grow, may they never experience a day without knowing who you are. May they never walk a day in question of who you are, but may they always be drawn to your heart, O oh Lord. And Lord, I pray over Shane as he leads this home, as he covers this home through your blood in his life. Lord, as that he is passed down to his children. Lord, that you would give him the strength and the wisdom, Lord, to know and to do what he needs to do. Lord, as he leads them in you. Lord, I thank you for Vanessa, and I pray a covering over her and a strength upon her. Lord, may your love and your heart flow out of an abundance in her life, Lord Jesus. And I pray that one day, when her children are grown, they will look at her and call her wonderful. Lord, because of what she has poured into them. 
We thank you for it today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Also, we have some anointing oil for you, for the littles, because we know littles get sick. We know they have their challenges, so always go to prayer first. Always go to prayer first. And then we have some certificates for you, and we are so blessed to have you guys. We love you. Will you give it up for the LaPC family this morning? stay up here and preach, Zoe? No? One of these days, one of these days, I'll get her to preach a sermon with me. Oh, well, what an honor. It's Father's Day. There's lots going on here. In just a minute, you're going to get to hear my father. Um, but before we do that, we have some things we want to honor fathers. So today we're going to roll a short video and I'll be right back. Happy Father's Day, neighbor. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, it's a uh, family tradition. Wear your Father's Day gifts all day. You wore that to church this morning? Indeed I did. Yeah, it was cute when they were kids, and now they're just trying to humiliate me. Get out. I wish I could. But humiliation is their love language. So, how about you? My teenage daughter got me a coupon for a Manny Petty. I love a good mani-pedi. No, you don't get it. She wants me to take her to get a mani-pedi so I can pay for the mani-pedi. Hmm. <laughs> can you take that baby tie off, please? That, that's what's bothering you about this ensemble? I just can't talk to you with it on. How about your boy? He got me a Love Me Tinder trout. Fish me tender. Fish me sweet. <laughs> Ever let me go. Those sound like good gifts. Do they? You did not go to church dressed like this today. Yeah, I guess. Hey, listen. As fathers, we try to provide. We communicate with grunts more than we do words. We leave the toilet seat up as a conscious act of rebellion. And we don't complain about our Father's Day gifts. That's a father's lot in life, my friend. It's not the gifts. It's, it's really not the gifts. See this? My daughter gave this to me for Father's Day when she was five years old. She said to my wife, Mommy, I need to get Daddy the best gift ever because he's the best dad ever. She even wrote here on the tag, Happy Father's Day. She cuddled with this thing every night until she gave it to me. I was this little girl's whole world. One year they're getting you chair stuffed animals and then in the blink of an eye, it's pedicures and fish. They just grow up so fast. I just wanna know that my role as a father matters before it's too late. I am gonna get that fish a reservation to Heartbreak Hotel. <laughs> Our pastor this morning at church said, um, scripture, a child's glory is their father. Mm. That sums it up. That's all I wanna be. I just wanna make my kids proud, encourage them. Just be the man God called me to be. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Duty calls. Hey. You are your kid's glory. Your daughter, she's not looking for a freebie. She's saying she wants to spend time with you. And your son, he thinks you have a good sense of humor. I am pretty sure that your kids still think you're the greatest dad ever. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Hashtag dads are awesome. <laughs> Hashtag dads are awesome. All right. Happy Father's Day. If you're a, a male 
Over 18, our ladies are passing out some Father's Day gifts. This is our Father's Day survival kit, 2016. So raise your hand, let them see you. Um, we're going to pass this out. And we have a, a survival kit for dads today. All right, so we're going to go through this survival kit a little bit before I introduce dad. All right. In your Father's Day kit, you should receive... Oops, I just lost the army man. Where'd he go? He's belling. Man down, man down. All right. You should receive a flashlight. The flashlight's falling apart. That's what you get for a $1.50 flashlight. All right. So here's your survival kit. Here's what you need to understand what they mean. Mine don't even work. There it is. All right. So I wanted to get you, in the years past, we've gotten your dad's root beers and sugar daddies and really have no meaning to them. But this year, I wanted you to take home this dad's survival kit because Psalms 119.105 says this, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Just as I charge these fathers up here, men, we are to lead our families in a dark and depraved world. And if you do not have the light of God's word, you are going to stumble and you will fall. So this is to remind you that you need the God's word to be your light to your feet. All right? Then you should have in here a three musketeer, right? Everybody likes a good three musketeer. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Men, you cannot do it alone. You need two other men in your life that are serving and passionate about God to stand by you so that you can, you can make it through, you can uh, weather the storms. Then you should have some in there. You should have some Hershey hugs and kisses. Um, and the Bible says as this in 1 Corinthians. It says, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. You see, men, we have to love unconditionally our kids. We don't have to like them unconditionally, but we have to love them unconditionally. And we need to show them that love. You need to hug your kids. You need to kiss your kids. You need to express the love you have for them. So that's a reminder with the Hershey Kisses. And then you have a little army man in there. Because all of us, well, no, if you're under 50, you probably never saw one of these. Um, but the army man is this. John 15 says there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. And I would say there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your family. You see, men, we have a challenge. We're to be Christ in our family. What did Christ do for us? He gave his life. He sacrificed it all. So instead of standing on our rights of I'm the head of the house, we need to humbly walk and sacrifice. We need to humbly give our lives and lay them down for the freedom of our families and our children, spiritually and every other way. So I challenge with you, that's a challenge for you. That's some reminders. And in there, we have a dad's card. This is kind of like a man's card. You know that card you lost when you said I do? Um, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding. We have, a, we have a dad's card in there, and you got the verse from Psalms 119, but then on the back, it says this. We're going to do a Father's Day pledge as a father. I can't read this. Uh, I will lead my family in Christ always. I will pray over my family daily, love my family unconditionally, and lay my life down continually. So I want you to sign that card. I want you to put it in your wallet where you're going to see it. So put it next to your credit card because that's what you use the most. Um, you, that you pull that out. Every time you pull that out, you are reminded of the commitment that you have as a father or the challenge you have as a father to be what you need to be for your family. So happy Father's Day. We love you, and I uh, hope you enjoy all the gifts there. Um, I thought it was much better than a dad's root beer. Um, though if you want a dad's root beer, come back next year. Um, <laughs>
Not that I'll get your dad's root beer. Oh, but it's a great day. Today, I have the privilege of introducing to you our speaker, who I, we flew him all the way from Cabo uh, last night at about 9.30. He's a world traveler speaking all over the world. Uh, he spoke to some fish in Cabo. Um, no, he ate the fish in Cabo. But uh, I'm so excited because uh, I get to have my father here, and he's going to preach this morning. So would you welcome this morning uh, Pastor Cliff Traum. I was looking on Facebook, and four years ago this weekend, you, I, and Trevor preached a sermon at Bethel. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited and grateful for having you here today. I love you. I'm proud to be called your son. Thank you, son. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What a joy. Yeah, I, I pushed the button. Am I on? I'm on. Well, at least... I hope I'm on. Uh, at district council this year, uh, the district honored us for 50 years of ministry. And uh, it's been a joy for 50 years to preach the gospel. And uh, I'm already, somebody said, are you retired? I said, no, I've already book three Sundays in May uh, for 2017. I don't book any farther than that because I don't know if I'll be here. <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's just, just a wonderful joy. And, and to be on Father's Day, uh, to share. Now, please, I want you to know from the get-go, I was never... A perfect father and uh, uh, some things I will share with you uh, I'm still working on trying to be the best grandfather now I can tell you if you don't already know it having grandkids is much better than having kids If I would have known that, I'd have never had kids, just grandkids. <laughs> but there Thank is... you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> I do remember a poem, though. I've seen the lights of Paris, I've seen the lights of Rome, but the sweetest lights I've ever seen is the taillights of my kids taking the grandkids home. <laughs> So, that's about as far as my literary uh, powers uh, goes. But uh, I want to share with you uh, the, this Father's Day, a sermon called He Did. And uh, when Tracy asked or told me that I was going to get to, to speak on Father's Day, I... I I've preached almost 50 Father's Day sermons, but I never went back to any of them. I said, Lord, give me a fresh word. Give me something. And uh, uh, Carol spoke here on Mother's Day. Did you enjoy that, lady? Yes. And uh, she spoke on Mary. I'm going to speak on Joseph, the stepfather. And... Uh, there's three parts to the sermon. There's a sermon, and then I want to give you four things that I've really learned of uh, being a father. And then I want to tell you about a stepfather uh, that you'll never meet, but he was my stepfather. And uh, so that's where we'll be. Father, thank, us. thank you today for what a good time. It's always wonderful to be in your presence. And it's marvelous to be with the saints of God. So bless our moments together. Make them uh, fruitful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My text is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 
to 24 from the message. And is it, do we have that on the screen? Yep. Okay. While he was trying to figure uh, a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit-conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. You, she will bring forth a son to birth. Uh, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus, God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embodied uh, sermon to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will call him Emmanuel, Hebrew, for God is with us. And then in verse 24 and 25, then Joseph woke up. He did. And that's where I took my sermon title. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary, but he he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named the baby Jesus. Today, uh, Father's Day, uh, like Mother's Day, can be very hard for some. Maybe you're like me. My dad's passed away. He's been gone 15 years. I miss him every day. Uh, it may be that you had a father that was absent. Uh, I never knew my biological father. Uh, I don't even remember him living. Uh, I, I come from a dysfunctional family. You do not come from a dysfunctional family. <laughs> We're just going to get some things clear. Uh, my, my father was married and had two children and divorced and then married my mother and had three children and divorced and then married another lady and had three children. But when I give my heart to Jesus and Christine was born, I held her in a little chapel and I said, you'll never, ever feel what I felt. And mom and I have been married... Uh, 55 years and uh, more in love today than we've ever been. And uh, so that's why I say he, he's dysfunctional, but it's not because of his family. And, and so today, today is hard for... For some people. And, and, and the big idea is to encourage fathers wherever you find yourself. I want to encourage you as fathers. I want to encourage you as single dads, as stepdads, as single on Sunday dads, widower dads, uh, absentee not by your own choosing dads. I want you to know today that God loves you, God cares about you. And you're not alone in your journey. That's why on Mother's Day I preached at the Bethel campus where uh, I, I pastored for 30 years. And, and, uh, and I said, moms, I've never preached on Proverbs 31. I don't want a mother walking out of here feeling I don't measure up to that. I've always preached encouragement, hope. There's a brighter day tomorrow. There's somebody that's, that, that's by you that the Bible says greater is he uh, than the, he that's against you. And dads today, uh, I, we make mistakes. Uh, I wished I could go back and, and do some other things it's differently. Number one, I wished I would have spanked them harder. That's why I wished I would have spanked them harder. <laughs> in, in, in our home, when Carol would say to the kids, uh, when your dad gets home, he's going to spank you, they went into their happy dance. 
I wish I would have spanked them more often because after they become adults, I learn things they did that I didn't know about. And, and I might have spanked them, and these are for 10 things I don't know about, but I'm sure you're going to do. I just want to encourage you. Let's look at our, uh, our, our characters of our text. We really don't have any uh, official records about their correct age, but as close as we can guess, Joseph, I, I want you to get this, was 18 years old. Mary was around 15. Both of these kids resided in the town of Nazareth, a town located approximately 80 miles north of the holy city of Jerusalem, 15 miles east of the Sea of Galilee. Carol and I have been in these places about seven times. To many, Joseph is a mere footnote in biblical history, but we can be sure that God was as concerned with who would be the earthly father of his son as he would be concerned about the earthly mother. He's such a prominent member, uh, our figure in the nativity story unfolds, and then it's just like he vanished. Other than when Jesus was left behind in the temple at about the age of 12, uh, and then later uh, it was brought up, are these not the sons, uh, is this not the son uh, of Joseph the carpenter? There's little more that, that we know about Joseph. The rest of his life is left up to speculation, and we are left with a lot of questions. Most commentators think he might have died sometime during Jesus' teen years. We just don't know for sure. But Joseph is just kind of like us. We're a bunch of unknowns, and we're a bunch of common people that if we let God, we can be more than, unco than common people. And Joseph was one. So I, I have three points. Number one, Joseph's dilemma. Number two, his dreams. And number three, his decisions. Father, we thank you for the message. Amen. <laughs> oh, I don't get paid unless I do. Okay, until I do the whole thing. Yeah, got to give me an A for trying. <laughs> Dilemma in verse 19. And it says, Sir Grin, but noble, determined. Now, now we're talking about an 18-year-old. We're, we're, we're not talking about a, a seasoned person, but determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. I just tell you, he had a deep love for Mary. And that's remarkable because most in that day were arranged marriage. In fact, it's, there's the, the, when I think a dilemma, I have a three-year-old grandson that, uh, no, not Tanner. Uh, Tanner's one of my older ones, uh, but, but lives in New York. And his grandma was back there taking care of him, and he yelled at her, and he said, Grammy, I got a dilemma. And she thought, a three-year-old dilemma? And she said, what's your dilemma? He said, my truck, it's stuck, and I can't get it out. That's a dilemma. See, grandkids are teaching us adults every day. And how many's ever had a dilemma? Yeah? No, I don't mean the person next to you. I mean, you had a... Three stages in, in the Jewish custom. Number one was the engagement part. That's when a legal contract was signed. And the only way to get out of that was a buyout. See, so you, you, you can buy out the contract. And the second stage was betrothal, which was one year without any physical uh, contact. Uh, and, and the way you got out of that was a divorce. And then the third stage was marriage. And, and the only way you got out of that was divorce or stoning. Uh, divorce, stoning. 
the stony. Uh, I'm sorry, ladies. I'm just repeating what Israeli customs were. I'm not saying I agree with it, but this this situation would uh, fall in the category of stony. And, and, and so those are the things that Joseph was faced with. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. I don't want to do a Christmas thing. I, I want you to think about the fact that Joseph did what God told him to do. That's still a challenge for us today, is it not? To do what God has told him to do. And, and, and did obedience make sense for Joseph? Absolutely not. Obedience was not his natural inclination under these circumstances. Joseph already had a plan, and his plan looked nothing like what the angel told him. And that's often the way it is when we choose to live by faith. Amen? It, God's ways don't look anything like our ways. Obedience doesn't always add up. It makes me wonder, what was Joseph thinking in the midst of all of this? What would you and I have done if we were in his shoes? Would we have obeyed unconditionally or, wanted, uh, or would you have wanted more facts? God, this is kind of loose end. I, I'd really like to know how the end of this dilemma works. How many are like that even today? Okay, I, I'm in a dilemma. I'm smart enough to know I'm in that. Uh, God, give me the end. Let me see that I'm going to make. Would you have felt that God owed you a more detailed explanation? What would be different in your life and my life if we decided right now, from this day forward, we would do whatever God told us to do? No more arguing. No more debates, no more rationalizing, no more excuse. You said it, I did it. How, how would our lives be different if that was our attitude, if that was our motive? God, it doesn't make sense. <coughs> For us to move to Modesto after being raised in Oregon all of our life, not knowing anything about Modesto except it was hotter than Hades. <laughs> I even saw the devil one day with a canteen heading north. <laughs> and God said, go to Modesto. I didn't know anybody. I had just put my marine son with my daughter in Seattle in college, and I'm moving 600 miles south of him. Nothing. I want to tell you right now, if you're, if you're serving God, content is contingent on you understanding everything he tells you to do. Forget it. Because most of what he tells you to do does not make sense. And secondly, it's never comfortable. Thirdly, it always challenges the flesh. What would happen if we made the kind of commitment, though, that Joseph made? The other day I saw something that caught my attention. Do you know it's not the world that has a beef with God? It's the Christians. You understand what I mean by beef? I'm not talking about meat. I'm talking about an attitude. How do you react when God messes with your life? How do you react when God uh, interrupts? How, 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 what's our response to God? <coughs> when, he, when there's intrusion into our plans. <coughs> Thank you, son. You, you hadn't drank out of this, and you're not going to drink out of it after I am. Okay. I don't want him to. 
have whatever I got. I don't know what I've got. That's why I don't want him to have it. <laughs> How do we react? I thought things were going smooth and everything was comfortable and I finally arrived and then God. How many understand? Oh, yeah. And then God. You want me to do what? And when? Now? Impossible. Ever been caught with what God says and what makes sense? This means, Pastor, you don't have to say amen for me, but if you could at least do that, that means you're not looking at your iPhone or your iPad or your sleep. You know why they have bright lights on the pastor? So he can't see what's going out there. <laughs> Because it would discourage him. <laughs> I've been preaching 50 years. You're not going to pull anything on me. <laughs> Ever wonder why God does what he does? The second thing is he had dreams. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in that dream. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. You will bring a son to birth. She will bring a son to birth. And when she, and whatever that says, <laughs> you will name him Jesus, God says. God saves. Joseph had four dreams. Probably the only guy in the Bible that had more dreams than Joseph was, was Daniel. You might say that Joseph was a dreamer. The first dream he had, it was uh, that the angel said it's okay to marry, uh, mar uh, to marry Mary <coughs> as she has not been sleeping around. Then the second dream is when God warned him to take Mary and the child Jesus to Egypt. And then the third dream, when an angel of the Lord came to Joseph, telling him, return to Israel. And then the fourth dream, when on his way back from Egypt, God spoke to Joseph, in it, guiding him to move his family uh, to Galilee. Joseph must have had deep faith. Even at, Now he's 18 now had deep faith and, and must have been a keen disciple uh, of God. Perhaps that is why he's described as a righteous man. A righteous man was one who was keen to keep God's law. So God's, uh, I, I, whether you were excited about it, I want to tell you, uh, Joseph was excited about dreams. I want to tell you something. God still talks to his people. God still talks to his people. Would you look at somebody next to you, even if they're not your spouse, and say, you look lovely? You can get forgiveness afterwards. I got a drink. <laughs> God speaks through his word. God speaks through prayer. God speaks through nature. God speaks through a song. Our worship leader, his, he, that, whole, that whole team, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. God speaks uh, through a sermon. Hopefully today I'm going to say something that God speaks to you. Otherwise I wasted your time and I apologize for that. God also, uh, God also speaks through dreams. My, it, and sometimes the dreams aren't very, uh, aren't very encouraging. My wife at 14 had a dream of her and I. I'm four years older. And, and uh, I'm, she's a saint. I'm the heathen. I was born a heathen. 
I was raised a heathen, and I are a heathen. <laughs> and God told her that we were going to be married and showed her a dream at 14 years of age of us walking down a dusty road with a Bible and she preaching one side and me to the other. We call it a dream now. Then it was a nightmare. <laughs> Honey, when you're preaching, I don't ad lib. I, all I want is the same respect. And besides that, it's Father's Day. <laughs> now back to what I was doing. God still speaks. That wasn't God speaking then. That, that's not what I'm talking about. He speaks to us sometimes just out of uh, a circumstance. He speaks to us uh, sometimes uh, in a dream, in a vision... Uh, do you know that uh, millions of Muslims are being saved, not by the preached word, but by dreams? Jesus is showing up to them in dreams, and they're giving their lives to Christ. God's got so many. Uh, uh, through message and tongues and interpretation, God can speak to you. Sometimes God speaks to you from an, uh, another brother or sister. It, usually it's not a new revelation. I can't preach on it. I've got to get saved here. Uh, it's not a new revelation, but it's an affirmation of something that God... Sometimes God just talks to you. I've often said at the Bethel campus that everybody says, Pastor talks to God and God talks to Carol. Yeah. <laughs> But it's working, as long as it's working. So, friends, when you can trust God, I'm saying. And you can rely on him not to give you just some assignment and leave you dangling out there. Third thing, decision. Verse 24, <coughs> he woke up, and that's what's really important. He did exactly what God's angel commanded. He did exactly. His decision was to be faithful to the will of God and to do what God told him, to bear the responsibility and shame as if he and Mary had sinned. Because that's what everybody thought. Or she had sinned with somebody else. This was no small item in that day. It may be accepted in our society today, but not then. Remember that stoning thing I was talking about? Now keep in mind, we hold them in high regard for being the people we know them to have been, uh, are, uh, for them to have been, but it wasn't like that in that day. They lived under a cloud of public shame as though they were guilty of immorality. And Joseph accepted the responsibility of caring for a woman thought to have been a fornicator and rearing a child thought to be illegitimate. You think God's asked you a tough thing. I don't know that it gets any more personal than that. That's touching the very core. And Joseph's decision was to do what is right no matter what it costs. To do God's will. He stayed by Mary's side, made the trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Why? To do the will of God. He leads Mary and the baby Jesus into Egypt. Why? Because God told him to. He's doing the will of God. When you see Joseph later raising the child Jesus, teaching him a trade, taking him to the temple, what was he doing? He was doing the will 
of God. Nothing greater can ever be said of you and I when we are dead and buried than they did the will of God. Think about that. Because if, if, if we're honest, we struggle with God's will sometimes. And you know why? Because there's another will out there. Ours. Yeah. <coughs> See, I kid around with my wife a, a, a lot. But she isn't my biggest problem. And I kid around with Pastor Tracy and, and Terry and, and Kip. Christine was never a problem. <laughs> That's why we had her first. <laughs> well, I won't be preaching back here in 2017. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that. Do you, honey? <laughs> there, there's a spot in my notes that I didn't write that Sheila wrote. And I'm trying to find out where that is. <laughs> yeah, so, huh? Your will versus Your will versus, your will versus God's will? No. Oh, my. <laughs> We struggle with our will because we have, uh, we, I better leave that alone. <coughs> and anyone in the room likely has struggled with his will versus God's will in some area uh, of your life. Let me, let me wrap up. Or is there another slide, uh, Daniel? After this slide, would you put it up? There isn't another slide? Okay, God is still working, looking for Joseph today, common people who serve an uncommon God. And how many know he's uncommon? But he has to work with us. He doesn't work with animals. He works with us, his creation. At every curve in life, and how many have found out that life will throw you curves? Here's what Joseph did. He chose to trust God. Will you choose to trust God this morning? Secondly, he chose to express faith. Will you let faith have the day God, I don't understand it. I don't see how it can work. This thing is going to blow up in my face. Uh, all, the only result I see in this is, is humili uh, are, uh, being humiliated. The only thing I could see that could come out of this is a dysfunctional family. And, 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 and how, you know, I'm his stepfather. What do I owe him? And and all those kinds of things. And here's this 18-year-old. And he says, because of these dreams, God, I'm going to do it just like you said. And the consequences I'm leaving up to you. The results I'm leaving up to you. How this finally turns out is up to you. I... I um, I, I'm not responsible for the results. I'm only responsible to say, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not hard to do, folks. Just hang in there. We're about done. <laughs> Will you be that kind of person to this Father's Day? Will you be willing, like Joseph, to serve, to follow, to obey, even when you don't understand? There's a lot of questions about the Bible that we won't be able to answer until we get to heaven. I hear people say that all the time, 50 years of pastoring. I've heard, boy, when I get to heaven, 
I'm going to ask this. I'm, no, you're not. You're going to be so tickled you're there, you're going to dance for a million years. I made it. Woo! You won't give a rip who the mark of the beast goes upon or, or who the Antichrist is. I made it. What kind of person are we going to be today? Willing to serve, to follow, to obey, even when you don't understand. There are a lot of questions we don't know, we don't have answers to. But there are some things you need to know today. Does God care? Do you matter to God? Does he still love his children? The answer is yes. Don't worry about that anymore my prayer is that when I breathe my last that the same thing can be said of me as Joseph he did everything God asked him to do wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be great if that's a summary your life summary statement she did everything he did everything God commanded him to, to do Obedience should be the goal of every committed Christian. This would be the greatest measure of success. It's your choice. It's my choice. We can say yes to God or we can say no to God. Let's say yes. Let's say yes. First part done, second part's not going to take very long. Will you give me a few more minutes? You might as well, I'm going to take it anyhow. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a nice guy. <laughs> Some things a son uh, over the years, and I'm not a perfect father, far from it. Far from it. Uh, but I've learned some things over the years. A and dads, your sons need to know this, and your daughters need to know this. First of all, they need to know that you love their mother. Is that up? Do we have that? They need to know that you love their mother. Uh, my mom was remarried when I was nine years old. I found out uh, who my stepdad was when my grandpa, uh, who I lived with, said, Buster, oh, that time. Now, that's my middle name. Nobody uses it but me. <laughs> Tanner, nobody uses it but Papa. He said, your mom got married tonight. I said, oh. And he says, do you remember my grandfather had 10 logging trucks? He said, you remember who drives uh, uh, number 11? I said, yeah, because my summer I'd ride a logging truck all day. And, and I said, yeah. He said, he's your new father. How would you like to be introduced that way? <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know him or nothing, but so he's my dad, okay? They need to know that you love her mother. And that's, he didn't, my, my stepfather didn't really learn to love me until after Christine was born and the boys were born. And, and, uh, and so, it, but it didn't matter. He loved my mom. And they were married over 50 years. And I carry his name. And that's Dirty Pool having a cell phone call in to make everybody realize how late it is. That's just not fair. That's just wrong. Sheila loves me. She would not do that to me. <laughs> Show affection to your wife. You know, I, I don't mean to go so far that the kids yell, get a room. But I mean, <laughs> I just, I'm just trying to, to reach every level. 
I'm going to be 78, and I think it's pretty cool I'm trying to, to, to hit. <laughs> Words like, I, I love you. My wife and I have this deal. We try to be the first to say, I love you, every day. And, and, and uh, uh, she wakes up. I wake, I wake up in stages. About three stages in the course, and then I'm finally awake. She wakes up, she's just like that. So I thought, I'll fix her. You, how many know those little sticky things? I wrote, I love you, and when she was asleep, I put it on her forehead. <laughs> and she woke up and she said, I love you. And I said, look in the mirror. <laughs> Kidneys, baby, they work. I constantly tell my wife, you're the most important thing in my world. See, you need to, it's not just you tell her you love her when you get married and it's still in effect so you never say anything for 50 years. You need to continue, your kids need to continue. The second thing is he needs, they, your son needs to see you fail not just succeed. Terry, our oldest, who's deputy chief of police in Watsonville, California, a Marine. We were having trouble with him, and my best friend, who you boys know, Jack Kirkendall, said, he's a great guy, very wealthy and entrepreneur, and, and, and Jack said, you're your son's worst problem. Whew. How many know that didn't set well? And I said, what do you mean? He says, Terry thinks he can never measure up to his dad. You're successful as a pastor with the district and everything. You need to find one thing that he's better at than you are, and you focus on it. And I found he could ride a motor uh, dirt bike better than I could. So he was 10 when I bought him his first bike, and, and he still rides, and he's a was a police motorcycles, and, 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 and so I found things, and Terry was a better shot than I was. I wouldn't say I was a bad shot, but when we'd go deer hunting, the deer would walk out in front of me and laugh. <laughs> but I really plowed up that field. <laughs> And he was a great shot. And I had a wonderful, wonderful 270 Savage deer rifle with everything. Terry still has it today. I found something he is better, and that helped him. He needs to see you fail, not just succeed. Number three, and I'm hurried. He needs your love regardless of his choices. I've always told a kid, I will not always agree with your choices, but you'll never not be my son or my daughter. And that's what they need to know. Are you getting it? The fourth thing they need to know is you need to affirm them. I never heard, now my dad was German, and I never heard my dad say, I love you. I never heard him say, I'm proud of you. I, I, I never. He told everybody in the world that but me. Dads don't let that happen. Do you know how proud I am to be able to preach in my son's church? Not my church. My son's church. Money can't buy that. An honor can't buy that. No, that's something I'll go to my grave eternally grateful. Now, let me, that's the end of the third. Let me show you some slides, and I conclude. Have I bored you, or is this okay? Okay. Because if you would have said yes, I, I've got a lot more jokes. <laughs> Show the first slide. See that slide? See the guy in the white shirt 
real tan. That's my dad. He's about 20 years old. He went into the war right after Pearl Harbor at 18. And he's come out at 22. Now, it just so happens that they're in the Pacific, in, in, I think this was in Iwo Jima, and to his left and to his right is his two twin brothers, Ken and Keith. And they happened to be, they were CB Marines, and so, uh, but that, that's my dad. Now, he's my stepdad, okay? But I love that man. And I carry his name. My boys carry his name. My grandsons carry his name. And when they have grandson, or sons, the, my dad. And mom had three children when dad and her got married. The next picture, that's my dad. He never told me he loved me, but I knew he did. See, and, and, and the fact is, I got adopted when I was 42. Yeah. Because I was sitting in my, my office and the phone rang. Now, my dad wasn't a very social person. And uh, he's somewhat opinionated. Well, a whole lot opinionated. And... And uh, his nickname was Muscles. And nobody messed with my dad. He had eight brothers, seven of them served in World War II together. And, and dad was, mom was on the phone, said, you've got to calm your dad down. Uh, we're at the lawyers. We're having a will made. And your dad doesn't understand it. All five of you kids are not in the will. Only the two that your dad and I have are in the will, and he is about to punch the lawyer. So I got Dad on the phone. I said, okay, Dad, now let me talk to the lawyer. I'll find out what's wrong, and we'll get it all straightened out. So I talked to the lawyer, and the lawyer said, I can't do anything, Pastor. That's the way it is. He's, you are not his natural child. And I said, okay. Uh, I said, can uh, uh, he adopt us? And they said, yes. I said, okay, there's three of us. I'll pay for it. So I got Dad back on the phone. I said, Dad, it's all taken care of and everything. He said, how did you work that? And I said, well, uh, we're going to pay for our adoption. He said, no, you're not. He, I heard him yell at the lawyer. Uh, Whatever that paperwork is, get it done right now. Dad was not patient, man. I don't think he, he, he can even pronounce patience. And so at 42, I was adopted. And this is how much we love him. Next slide. That was one year. Dad died of Alzheimer's. Keith and Ken died of Alzheimer's. His younger brother, Bob, died. And that's in his... Uh, that's in his convalescent hospital just a couple months before he died. Next picture. And that's the five of us. That's my mom, my brother, John, Tom, sisters, Barb and Kath. And this deal says, Glenn E. Traub. Some say he was my stepdad. No, he's my dad. Love you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. So proud to be your son. Thank you. So proud that I carry my grandfather's name. I carry all of it. My middle name is Glenn. 
I hope you have heard the heart of a father this morning. He did it. He did exactly what God told him to do. So this morning, your challenge as you walk out of here, men, women, young adults, are you willing to do what God has told you to do? It's a life changer. Would you stand with us this morning? I'm going to pray. We're going to dismiss. And I just have to say, Dad, it's probably one of the greatest messages that I've ever heard you speak. Very challenged. We'll have to go back and really look at this and challenge myself and walk in this. Lord, we thank you today that we serve a father of the fatherless, a father to all of us. Lord, we thank you today for your word that has been spoken, the challenge that has been set forth. And as we walk out of here today, may we have the heart of Joseph. That when you tell us, this is what I want you to do, we do it just as you have commanded. And we walk in it in faith. Lord, thank you for today. May we be encouraged as we walk out, knowing that when we walk in you, you will take care of the results. We're just, we're just to walk in you. You take care of the results. So, Lord, we thank you for it. In your heavenly Father name, Jesus, amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a great Father's Day. If you have a visitor's card, please come to the hub and get your mug, get your gift cards. Have a great day.